Hello again, and welcome to another Unity and FMOD tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at setting up a simple um, audio settings pause menu, um, which we are going to use to alter some of the faders of our buses within FMOD. Um, so it's very similar to um, a video up about uh, a few weeks ago on uh, mixing basics in FMOD. Uh, this time we're going to you know, use them a bit more practically, you know, so hopefully this will help um, any of you guys out who are doing some audio for a game or, you know, making a game yourself. Uh, so let's jump straight into it. Um, I'm going to jump into this scene real quick just to show you what I've done with my pause menu. Um, it's one of the scenes I've used quite a lot now, you know, it's the same one from the last video. Um, so let's have a listen to what we could hear within the scene. So we've got some music we can hear, some footsteps, the sound of the handgun whenever I click. Now if I press P and pause, I get this little pause menu. I can then go to the audio settings. I can turn down the music if that's too loud. I can maybe turn up the sound effects. And when I do, I get a little sound effect that plays as a reference so I can hear how loud they'll be. Let's turn it down a bit. And I've got a master, which will just turn everything up or down. So that's what we're gonna be trying to do. Just set up a little system somewhat, something like this. Um, so yeah, so now we've had a look at that, let's quickly have a look at what's happening in FMOD. Um, so in my uh, FMOD um, project, there's not a lot going on. Um, there's a lot of folders with just other sounds that I'm not actually using in this scene. Um, I'm using this music event and I'm using everything in the sound effects folder. So in total we're only using four, you know, events, but you can use this for, you know, massive projects with excuse me, with loads of different events if you like. Um, obviously you just have to bear that in mind when we come to the, um, you know, the uh, bus side of things. Um, so if I jump into the uh, mixer, we can have a look at my buses. Um, I'm gonna quickly just select the buses that I'm using. because Again, I'm not using all these. These are just to sort of organize all the sounds I've got in this project. Okay, so these are the three main buses I'm using. I'm basically sending all the music, um, even though there's one track, to this music bus. I'm then sending all my sound effects events to this bus here, and then both of these are being sent to this master bus I've made here. So my plan is, if I were to add more sounds and more buses, you know, everything would eventually get sent to this master bus, okay? Now, the reason why I've made an extra master bus, um, even though we've got one right here, is because as far as I'm aware, I don't think you can alter the settings of this bus within C Sharp and Unity. However, we can definitely alter the settings of any buses we create. Um, so hence why I've made my own little master bus, in case the player wants to just turn everything down. Okay, cool. Um, so I think that's everything from FMOD. Um, so let's have a look at what I've done in Unity. Now, in terms of making the um, actual pause menu itself, I'm not going to talk about that too much. Um, I will put a link in the description and hopefully on screen um, to a video series you can follow um, to make your own pause menu. In fact, that's the video series I followed in, in order to make this video because, uh, you know, saves time. <laughs> uh, but I'll quickly show you my pause menu. So basically under the canvas where we put all our UI game objects, I've got two um, parent objects. Um, the pause menu, which if I activate, contains all of this. So the text, the buttons and the background. Let's untick that, let's unactivate it. And the audio settings menu, which again contains all our sliders, our text, and our back button and all that, okay? So we're gonna be looking at how we can assign these faders, uh, these sliders, sorry, to the faders um, in FMOD that control our buses. Now, if I click on one of these sliders, let's just click on the music slider. Um, this basically here is how we find whatever value we want to change with these sliders. Uh, we're going to look at this in a bit, but I just wanted to show you that the moment I've got this set up to um, an object called Game Manager, um, and I'm accessing, you know, some settings within that game object. So if I close the canvas down, this is my Game Manager here, um, and I'm basically, this is just an empty game object that I added, and this is basically what I would probably use to throw just any scripts on that alter, you know, the entire scene. So for example, this script here, you can see, is what allows us to switch between the pause menus. That's the whole point of this script you know so when I press P on my keyboard the menus will pop up okay but we're not going to be looking at that too much like I said earlier this is the script we're going to look at so audio settings so basically the idea of this script is that this is the script that's going to change the the level of my faders in my buses um, I recommend um, you doing this all within one script um, just because well I'll get onto that in a bit 
Um, so as you can see, a lot of this stuff is stuff we did in our old videos. Um, quickly run you through it. So first, I've got an event instance. So this is going to be um, linked to the event I played you earlier when I was sliding down the sound effect settings, that reference sound. I go back into F mod. Uh, let's close this. It's this sound right here. That's the sound. So the reason why I picked this sound is because, you know, it's quite loud. Um, I've normalized it just to um, 0 dB, and I think I turned it down like a few decibels. Well, I say a few decibel, a few points of a decibel. Um, so, you know, if we turn up the slider full volume, we can get a rough idea of what to expect at max volume. Another reason why I chose this sound is because there's a nice sort of range or an, or an even range of a lot of different frequencies. So you've got lows, mids, low mids, you've got some really um, high frequencies as well. So that gives us an idea of when listening to, you know, all the frequencies, we want to see how loud they'll be. Um, the one thing I probably would have liked to have done is found a sound effect that was a little bit um, shorter, just because it can be a pain sometimes waiting for the you know the end of the sound to you know finish and then play again. Um, but if I really wanted to, I can change you know the settings in F mod so it just play every like half second. But then it didn't sound very nice, so <laughs> I've left it like this. But anyway, that, you know that's for up to you, that's for you to decide. You can use whatever sound effect you like. You could even get a bit creative um, and throw like you know a multi sound. Um, into the uh, event you want to use as the reference, and then it could just play like a lot of random sounds. You know, so every time you move the slider, it will play a different random sound from within your game. Uh, so let's jump back into the script. So that's what that's for. Um, and we then got some fmod.studio.bus um, classes that you we've put at the beginning of the script. And I've called these music, sound effects, and master. Um, in the, oh, we'll come back to the, that in a sec. And then we've also got three floats. So we've got a music volume float, sound effects volume float, and master volume float. Now I've given these all values at the start. Usually we don't bother. Uh, but if you don't give these values at the start, the their value, obviously these are what's going to control the volume, their value will start at zero if you don't, which is not what we want. We don't want to load the game and then there's just no volume. So give them whatever um, value you want them to start at. Last time when we looked at the um, float values with buses, um, I told you that basically one equals the fader at its highest volume um, or amplitude or whatever, and zero equals it at its lowest. Um, I was actually kind of wrong <laughs> on that. So if I go back to the uh, mixer, uh, let me explain actually a bit better what that means. So when you link a float value to um, the uh, volume of one of these buses, what you're actually doing is saying, okay, I want one, the value one, to represent the Vader at whatever position I left it at. So for example, let's take the master bus. So if I said I want the master bus to be at um, zero dB when the game starts, I'd leave it as it is right now at zero dB, and in the float, on the float, I'd set it to one, okay? However, if I pulled the Vader down to say minus 10, saved it and built the uh, project into Unity, and then set it in C Sharp to one, the float to one, um, we'd hear the fader at minus 10 dB. So one basically represents um, wherever you left your fader, wherever you saved your fader at. And zero obviously equals um, when the fader's all the way down. And then anything in between zero and one will you know, represent anything in between zero and minus 10 dB in this case. Um, so yeah. So as opposed to last time where I thought one men is at zero dB and ten dB, that that was wrong. Okay, it depends on where you leave the fader. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this at zero. Oh, that's not zero. I forgot. I <laughs> keep missing the button. There we go. Okay, save that. Cool. So let's go back into the uh, script. So uh, on my void awake function, I basically just linked all these classes to the um, the buses. As you can see, because the um, if I go back to the mixer view, uh, let's quickly select the buses we're working with. There we go. So because the master um, bu bus is a parent of these two buses here, I need to make that clear in my reference. I need to write that down in the um, where I've put bus colon forward slash. So as you can see here, that's what I've done. I've put bus colon forward slash, then I've put master and then music because master is the final bus and then the music bus, which is what I'm trying to activate, is um, goes into that, is sent into that. If you don't put that, if your bus does go to another bus before um, this master bus here, 
then it won't. You'll get an error. You won't be able to find your bus. So make sure if there's any parent buses, that you reference them. Uh, and it's the same with events. If you're going to reference them, as I've done here. So again, for the sound effects volume test event. I've referenced it with a create instance as opposed to using a public string, which we usually do. Um, oh, excuse that motorbike. You're going to want to make sure that any parent folders, you do the same thing, you reference. So if we go back out of the mixer, if we go into the this menu here, as you can see, if I close some of these just to make it a bit neater, this event here, in fact, let's drag it to the top. There we go. Oh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Chuck it in there. This event here is a um, child of this folder here, the sound effects. Um, folder. The sound effects folder is the parent of this uh, event. So again, I've got to reference that in um, this event here, otherwise it, it won't work. Okay. So yeah, in terms of all this, this is stuff we've done before. If we come to the update function again. This is what we did a couple of videos ago. We basically just took these classes and put set volume and then attached these um, floats to them. Okay. So these, so every frame is going to check to see what these float values are at to set the volume. Okay. Now then. Now I've got some custom functions I've made, um, one for each um, fader, I've got one for the master fader, or for the music fader, and for the sound effects fader. These are all public functions, and the reason why I've made them public is because they need to be in order for us to access, access them with the um, UI sliders, okay, otherwise it won't be able to find them. What I've also done in the parameter of each function is added a float. Now this float is basically going to compare um, whether the um, the uh, the floats up here need to be changed or not. So whenever the slider is changed, say it's changed from halfway to all the way up, so from 0 0.5 to 1, okay, that's going to then say, okay, we need to now change these um, values here, which will then change the values of our buses, and then we'll, you know, obviously change the position of, if I go back to the mixer, where our faders are. Okay, so that's what these are doing. So as you can see, when this function is called, it will only be called when the slider is changed, or um, well, the value of the slider is changed. So when the value of the slider is changed, this will be called, and then it will set the, the um, these uh, volume floats here to be the same as the new float for each function, if that makes sense. <laughs> Hopefully I've explained that well. Um, now, the uh, sound effects function, as you can see here, this one's a little bit different. Um, it does the same thing, you know, it checks between the two floats, but it also plays the event, because, you know, when we change the slider off the sound effects, we want to play that reference event. Um, all this is doing is what we've looked at before. I think we looked at this in the um, create a, a 3D event within C Sharp. Uh, so this is basically just checking to see if the um, event is already playing, because obviously um, we're going to be checking every frame to see if that slider has changed. Um, so obviously we don't want the event to be played every frame it gets changed, otherwise we'll just hear loads of the same sounds stacked on top of each other. So if the slider changes and the event starts playing, it won't play again until it's stopped playing, okay? Which is basically what all this is doing, okay? Um, and again, I'll put a link on the screen and in the description for that video so you can find out how we, you know, we've used that in the past. Um, but that's basically it, and obviously if you have more, um, buses, maybe you've got a dialogue bus, you do the same, you just add another flow, you know, another class for it, you know, you reference it and all that. And you just make its own function and just make sure it's public. Okay, so that's all good. So now let's go back into Unity and have a look at those sliders again. So obviously you create a slider when you go up here in the hierarchy, you click create, UI, slider, and then your well, a slider will appear on your um, screen here. Um, once you've done that, you then want to find it in your hierarchy, click on it, and you want to come down to this bit here. This is you know, all the important information we need to check. So obviously we know that the values are only going to be 0 and 1, so we can just leave that at 0, 0 and 1. The minimum value of the slider will be 0, the maximum 1. I'm pretty sure that's how it looked on default. Whole numbers, we're using decimal points, so we don't need that value. Now this is quite important. Make sure you set this value to whatever value you set these floats um, here, okay? So, for example, I've set I've set my float music volume to start at 0 0.5, so halfway. So I'm going to make sure uh, on this slider I've done the same because this is basically saying where do you want the slider to start? Obviously, if I um, put one when in the script I've got it starting halfway, the sound oh is this a sound effect? I thought this was a music slider. The sound effect slider would say the sound effects are full volume when an actual fact they'll be halfway. Although they would change when we then you know, move the slider within the game. But obviously we don't want that to happen. 
So I'm going to leave that as um, 0.5 because I want that to start the same. Now this is what you, this is basically where you find the function or the variable you want to change. So let's, in order to do this, what you hit do is click the plus. You want to find the game object that has the script attached to it that you're changing. So in our case, it's my game manager here. So let's go and you just want to drag it over here. Then you click on this drop down menu here and you want to find the script, so audio settings. And then if you come up here, you should have your um, float value that you added into the parameter brackets of your function here. Okay, obviously this is the value we, we, want, we want to check for or we want to change. Um, so in my case, because this is my sound effects slider, I'd choose the sound effects volume level. So anything in here, whenever the slider changes, any functions um, you select here will be activated. Okay, so that's basically what you need to know. So let's get rid of that. Um, and then all this here is for, you know, changing how the slider looks, which I don't really need to bother too much with. And there's a few more things you can change if you wish. Okay. Um, cool. So I think that's everything. I suppose if I wanted to, I could, if I go back to the script, obviously with the master, where I was changing the slider, there was the music referencing, but there was no sound effects referencing. Um, and the master's obviously controlling all the volume. So I suppose if I wanted to, I could do the same. I could copy and paste this, um, into the master function as well. And then the same thing would happen. Whenever I move that slider, it would play that um, sound effect to give me a reference for you know how loud the sound effects are. Uh, that's something you could do. Um, uh, another thing you could do maybe is you could, if when the slider changes um, in one of your functions, instead of changing the volume, you could uh, pause it, you know, um, oh, sorry, rather not when the slider changes. You could do that when you open the uh, pause menu. So, for example, if I go into my pause menu script here, basically, on this update function, I'm basically saying whenever the, the button P is pressed, um, the pause this pause function will happen and will pause the menu. What I could do is maybe reference the... Um, oh, where's it gone? Uh, reference these classes and say, instead of set volume here, I'd probably put something like... Um, it set, say if it was the music class, I'd say music dot set pause, um, and then I I think it's pause actually. Is it set pause or set pause? Set paused. Um, oh, that's, I've, <laughs> I've spelled music wrong. That's why it's not coming. <laughs> music dot set pause. Okay, set pause. Okay, and then when you do that, you just have to um, put in true or false because it you know it checks for a ball variable, which as we know is either true or false. Okay, so. Yeah, that's just an extra thing you can add if you like, <laughs> I suppose. But other than that, I think that's all there is to it. Um, hopefully, like I said, this is just a basic rundown of how you would go about setting up um, a... Uh, oh, don't know why that happened, but oh well. <laughs> um, setting up a um, audio settings menu uh, within a game using FMOD. You know, like I said, you could have loads more sounds you might want to add. Maybe more sliders you want to add. Um, just so long as... If I go back into the mixer, as long as you've got some sliders... Uh, some sliders, some faders for music, for sound effects, for dialogue, and maybe some other stuff. As long as all your audio is eventually being sent to them in some way, and then that's being sent to a master bus, you can then basically control all your audio. So I think, I'm pretty sure that's all there is to it. Um, thank you again for watching. Um, hopefully um, these are sounding a bit better. I'm trying to find a new space to record these in because to be honest, the space I'm recording in the moment isn't great. And I know you guys probably hear a lot of cars and bikes traveling past from time to time, which isn't ideal. Um, I don't really have a choice at the moment, but hopefully I'll be able to um, find a new space. Oh, I don't know if you heard that, but there's kids outside now, which is not ideal when you're talking about audio. Um, as always, please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this or if there's anything you want me to take a look at within FMOD and Unity. Um, I'm certainly, I'll certainly have a look into it um, and try and make a video about it if I can. But other than that, I've been Henry Scott, and as always, thank you for watching.